The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer to peer. Hello, hello. Hello. Body, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. I just, um, apparently, Mexico does our time change a bit differently because we're uh, central, but we're 6 30 right now. So I assume that we, <laughs> we still had like 45 minutes to go. Oh, you guys Sorry already changed clocks there? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, we changed clocks right this midnight here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think that's the, like the best example of, you know, why government just causes problems. It's like, you know, they're <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, like, they got to mess with our clocks, mess with our time, right? Like, it's, the sun rises and sets. They got to make it complicated. People get accustomed yep. to, to one way of life, and then, the, then it's got to change from sort of for some arbitrary reason. To keep the toes. To save energy. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. We could, we should just stay in summer daylight savings all the time. Yeah, I think we're getting there in the states. I think I, I give it it's a couple more years, and that's that's going to be gone. I think there. I've heard there are quite a few, quite a lot of places doing that where they're just changing yeah. over to, to not doing it. Yeah, a lot of yeah, it, it's happening. Too too much of this, you know. Too much. Uh, too many missed appointments. <laughs> exactly. So what do you got? You know, man? Like, Obviously, an, another another big week in 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 price and the economy. This is uh, yeah. So um, as good as it gets. Uh, you know, I have maybe I have fewer charts today than um, perhaps analysis. But uh, the big event in my mind this week that I've been waiting for was the Federal Reserve. I wanted to see uh, what they were going to say in their meeting. It, it wasn't so much the 75 basis points. Um, that was already priced in, but it was their forward guidance. Everyone like everyone was really high on the hopium saying, oh, maybe the Fed will, um, you know, maybe they'll pivot or maybe they'll, they'll pause. Maybe they'll talk about pausing in January or something like that. Um, but uh, Jay Powell just came out and laid the smack down on it. He said, no. nope, not going to happen. I, I did make that prediction last show, right? You, you did. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. I remember you were like, well, what's the chances that he doesn't do that? And yeah. Like, well, yeah. Maybe. I mean, he's he's been very, they've been very matter of fact about what their agenda is, right? And what their mission is. And they've, they've stuck to it, you know? They're, it they're, wasn't, it has been impressive. They like, okay, they kind of mislead about in certain areas, but in terms of them telling us what they're going to do, they've pretty much stuck to it. Yeah. So you know, at least we can at least we can respect that that they give so, us so now reason to believe. And, and then we have, we have inflation um, inflation numbers coming out. I think next week. I'm sure you'll get into all of that. But yeah, take it away, man. Where where are we headed now? Well, right now, um, price actually looks pretty good. Uh, believe it or not. Um, so this is Bitcoin. Um, this is the chart that I currently have drawn up. But essentially, we're we're kind of writing this uh, this. I, I mean, I would call it a bear flag. So this structure right here. Um, oh, you know, I remember looking at looking at the uh, the one from last week and realizing that YouTube doesn't always give us the greatest resolution. It doesn't give us the best um, clarity on some of these charts. So let me uh, zoom in. So hopefully it looks better. Um, okay. How does that look? Does that look any better for you guys? Um, it's good for. Yeah, that's pretty good for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, you can see basically we, we came from the top. Uh, we had a bear flag dropped. This isn't exactly a bear flag, but it's something kind of like that. We had another bear flag, and this is where I was really expecting to break down, and we didn't because the central banks came in and kind of saved things. <clears throat> but we're sort of in this secondary bear flag right here. So, um, you know, if we break through this right here, man, that, that could be positive. Um, <clears throat> I was really, I was really hoping to flip bullish. I was kind of hoping the Fed would give us something because now, to me, this isn't entirely clear. Like, this is not a bullish structure yet. It looks like maybe it wants to break uh, in a bullish direction, but we're, we still can't quite be sure of that. Um, so that's just Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at uh, crypto total market cap. Let me, let me do some of my. Um, I call this wave magic. Uh, wave magic. It's where I overlay all the. Um, all of the, uh, sorry, uh, simple moving averages. Um, hide indicators. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't like completely 100% prepared. I thought I had another half hour. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're looking at here is all the, is a whole bunch of different moving averages overlaid um, going from like um, the 10 candle moving average all the way up to like 5,000, which is the maximum that um, trading view allows for. So essentially we've, we've kind of broken out of this range here. You can see that, um, 
you know, price was basically limited coming into this moving average. It's kind of stayed down. Um, and now we've, at least on total crypto market cap, things really have gone above the moving averages there. So again, um, this is positive, but I just, I just have such a hard time with it, especially because um, stocks have significantly, um, stocks are like, they're, they're nowhere near where crypto is at right now. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Monero because um, Monero price action has been significantly stronger. Um, it's interesting when the other cryptos break out, Monero doesn't break out as much, but when they crash, Monero really, it holds its own. Our, our dominance has been has been going up for the entire bear market. Um, so right here, kind of this area of moving averages would be a place to expect some resistance. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Z scores as well. Z scores are kind of like um, RSI, but uh, they're they're kind of a more statistically way statistically appropriate way of, of doing it. I know I know people probably prefer RSI, but um, so Z scores basically ask um, how far are you away from the moving average in terms of standard deviation. There we go. It took a while. Let's go on the daily. Yeah, so we've got positive momentum. Th these are good Z-scores right here. Um, so this area right here is zero. Yeah, so that dotted line is zero. And essentially, you can see that in June, we, we kind of bottomed. Um, and then essentially, uh, momentum has slowly been making its way up. Um, Z-scores are, are totally a momentum indicator. The other thing is we've got just a slight amount of divergence here. It's not huge, but it is just a little bit. Um, so the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm still not biting right here. Um, I'm, I'm not biting because I'm not, I, I'm still not convinced that this is, this price action is real. Uh, let me see if I can find my, uh, let's see. Oh, this might be interesting to look at. Okay. So this is, um, total market cap versus the stock market. And you can see that, um, you know, we've really been going on a, on a pretty big run here in terms of total crypto market cap. Um, so here's the top uh, in uh, last year in, in November. And this is where we're at right now. And price really has um, done significantly better than the stock market. Now, I, I still I, I am concerned and I, I'm not a buyer right here. And essentially, to me, it's it's a risk to reward calculation. Could we pump here? Could we go up there? There really is a strong possibility that could happen. Um, but at the same time, because of the way that the economic um, situation is unfolding, where the Fed is saying, hey, not only are we not going to pause the rate hikes, in fact, they said um, it's, it's premature to be talking about doing that. Then they said, we're, we're probably going to raise rates higher than we initially anticipated. And then here's the clincher. They and said long. that. What's that? And longer, right? Higher and longer. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they said it could be it could be longer. They're not quite sure how long they need to do it. They, he said that. Um, that even though the supply chain has gotten more or less back uh, back to how it was, or at least improved significantly, you know, Jay Powell's like, well, there's still a lot of inflation. And here's the kicker. What they said is that they're going to err on the side of over tightening because their logic is that, listen, every time that we've dropped rates in the last, like, say, five years, um, and especially in 2020 for the COVID crash, Jay Powell was like, we can drop rates and we can start asset purchases and we can immediately recover the financial sector if we over tighten. He said, but the problem is if we let inflation get too far ahead of us, that's going to be a really hard problem to fix. So they said that they're going to they're going to err on the side of over tightening. Um, and then if they need to, they can lower rates. And we've seen that 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 will recover the economy uh, or at least the financial sector. Another thing that um, he brought out that I thought was really interesting was um, so, so lately I've had this thesis that, um, you know, the market has been kind of learning. So back in the 80s and 90s, the Fed would change policy. Uh, and then maybe three to six months later, that those those rate hikes or, or the really just say the changes in interest rate would filter down to the rest of the economy. But um, what we saw around 2015, 2019 was that as soon as the Fed would change monetary policy, the markets would respond. So like when the Fed stopped asset purchases um, in, uh, in 2015, the market, it didn't roll over, but it flattened out. Um, and then in 2018, 2019, the bottom of that pullback was the moment that Fed, the Fed stopped raising rates. And so the thing that Jay Powell said is that now what we're seeing is that the market is acting in anticipation of the forward guidance. So it used to be that the market would respond to what the Fed did a few months after the fact. And then in 2015, roundabouts, uh, the, the market was just doing exactly, it was lockstep with the Fed. But now the market moves just on the, on the anticipation of what the forward guidance might be. Um, so it seems like the Fed is acutely aware of these things happening. And so to me that, 
we look at the situation going to next year and I think, man, that's, that's a lot of, um, you know, those rate hikes make leverage more difficult to continue, right? You have to pay an interest rate on leverage on the money you borrow to, to make these bets. Um, they're still selling off their balance sheet. Uh, we still see um, reverse repos are still pretty, pretty flat, but they're, um, let's see, where are the re reverse repos? Maybe I don't have them here. Yeah, I guess I don't have them here. But anyways, reverse repos are, are basically flat right now. Um, so it's just, you know, going into next year, I think to myself, okay, if I'm wrong, or it wouldn't really be wrong here because I'm kind of 50-50. I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. I'm just neutral right now. But if we pump and I decide not to buy, I think it's very, very likely that at some point next year, I'm going to have the opportunity to rebuy around these prices. Um, but the problem is that maybe this pump isn't real, right? Maybe this is kind of just like trying to trap some some bulls because um, it seems like a lot of people are getting bullish now. Um, and I, what I don't want is to have done such a good do job, sold the top, and then I'm patiently waiting here and then to, um, you know, let the FOMO get the best of me and then watch the market drop back to 16, maybe 14,000. So to me, it's kind of a risk to reward thing. Um, but, but there really is probably a lot of opportunity. There, there really might be an opportunity for people to make some money here. Um, let's see. Okay. So these are the feds reverse repo purchases. Essentially, this is about 2 trillion, $2.2 trillion of cash just sitting with the fed. Um, that's liquid. These guys, it, it only sits overnight. So the people whose money this is basically institutions, um, they have very quick access to this cash. To me, once we start seeing, um, you know, if we start seeing this trend down, that's a really good sign that we might actually be getting out of this, um, out of this bear market. Um, Let's see. Oh, here's a, another thing I, I really wanted to show you guys today. Um, this is a regression analysis. This is the thing, one of the big things that helped me to call the top um, at uh, last year in 20, uh, 2021. So essentially, you're just taking uh, at least the top line. So you're taking this point here, that blow off top, this blow off top, and this one. And you're drawing like a mathematically, like a statistically provable best fit line through all of these lines. Um, and I think I showed you guys this last week. I can't remember. But anyways, yeah, we so, essentially, uh, yeah, so we hit this within like a percent. So mm -hmm. now the thing, to, now the bottom equation is more difficult. It's a lot harder to um, to come up with that one because you could just drop these four points into a spreadsheet and, um, and, and it's going to spit out a really easy equation. But the bottom one is more complex and you have to do quite a few more checks. Um, so I... I delayed doing that for quite a while, but so essentially this yellow line is kind of the first capitulation. And then the red line is the second capitulation. It's like the ultimate low. Um, so the thing is we're, we're kind of in between this zone right here now. Um, what I'm thinking could happen is something very similar to what happened in 2015. So we came down, we hit the bottom and we spent almost an entire year just hanging out down here. I think that's very likely in the cards for us. Like if we don't make a, a lower low, I think that Bitcoin is very likely just going to kind of um, trend trend on the bottom here. So it's totally possible right now, for example, that um, that maybe I'm going to draw some squiggles. These are very dubious. You know, don't trust them <laughs> at all. But, you know, maybe we do uh, something like this where price kind of does this and then it comes back down. And then maybe sometime next year uh, we do that or it could even happen a little bit further down. Um, what, what, what price perhaps. would you put us at for the bottom over there in your squiggle line? Oh, uh, right there, that would be like 17,000. So, you know, basically okay. just the same low. Right, right now, it's sitting at like almost 14,000 um, if we were to just crash tomorrow. Um, let's do a little overlay just to just to see what um, this bear market looks like. These are also highly dubious. It's called a bars pattern, or some people will call it a fractal. Um, but... Uh, it's, it's useful just to kind of get an idea for how maybe the market might rhyme. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So hypothetically, let's suppose that was the bottom, right? Let's just line up that bottom area right there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it has been quite a long time there. I think I did something wrong. I don't think I did that right. Mm -hmm. I think I did something wrong. So is that January, 2015, August? Yeah, I don't know. We kind of have been... How many, let's just do a measurement. How many candles is that? That would be 33 bars. Okay. Maybe I did the extension wrong. So if we go 33 bars from there, that would be, um, that would be, wow, that can't be right. Something, something isn't right here. Maybe, maybe it is. 
Okay, there we go. February 2023. Yeah, okay, that's right. So, so I don't know. It, maybe we could chop even longer than we did in 2014. It's, but essentially, I, I'm still kind of banking on touching this red line at some point. It could be next year. Maybe it could be the end of next year. And maybe it's maybe it happens at like 20,000 or 18,000. Uh, but anyway, so the reason I'm personally not a buyer here on most cryptocurrencies is um, it's just the risk to reward doesn't look great to me. Um, but at least in terms of Monero, I mean, I, I love Monero. I use Monero. Um, I'm always going to have some, even if we're in a bear market. I still have a, a pretty nice, um, a pretty nice stash. So, um, but I guess that's about all I have for you guys today. Nothing, nothing awesome. extraordinary. So obviously, the um, the inflation there's inflation numbers coming in this week, right? Like um, core inflation. Are they? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I didn't realize that. I need to check my calendar. So that that should um, be that should be interesting. I'm not sure if that's going to affect the markets too much. Um, it it might. Well, I, mean, I guess if we see if they if they you know if it looks like inflation hasn't peaked yet, then I guess that would just you know even make things more hawkish, right? Yeah. So here's the inflation um, the inflation numbers. Uh, core is in blue, mm -hmm. and then uh, white is the year over year CPI. Mm -hmm. um, that's the producer price index there. Okay, so yeah, core is in blue, CPI is in white. Um, I would say that, so right now to me, the bias the bias on all the markets to me looks positive. People want the market to go up. Like even though the Fed tried to put the smack down on people, the market was still like, oh, I don't know, let's try and pump anyways. Right. Uh, so if we get good numbers on the CPI here, I would say look for a pump. Um, if it comes down even just a little bit, that, that could definitely give us uh, a pump. Now, if it goes up, uh, in combination with what the Fed said this, this past week, it, it might end up being problematic for the markets. Um, and also the, the, the jobs report, right? I mean, jo the jobs numbers are still really good, right? So it just gives the Fed so much leeway to just continue to smack the market, you know, smack everything down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'm kind of surprised that, that crypto held up as well as it did. Like so, so uh, yeah. the stock market came down significantly, but crypto, um, yeah, but crypto, hung on really well. You, so, do you think crypto is lagging or it's leading? Um, man, I don't know. I think I kind of get the feeling that so there's kind of this narrative starting to float around that um, crypto is going to diverge from the stock market and that's going to be the bottom of the bear market and crypto is right. going to lead everything out of the out of the bear market and into the new bull. Now, um, because money is inherently uh, like a social construct, it you know cryptocurrencies as we have seen have can be very susceptible to narratives and narratives in the hands of millions of people um, can really create a market to be um, to actually just become that reality. And I even have friends that they'll like they'll shamelessly admit that uh, that they are manufacturing narratives. They want to try and make the reality. So, but it is possible that um, sometimes some some of these hedge funds, these market makers, they can sort of help that reality along, right? They can. They can sort of push things um, in that direction. Yeah, so wherever their money is, that's going to affect their predictions. Obviously, I mean we're, we're all guilty of that, right? I mean we we, we try to predict. Oh yeah. Us, you know, some don't even. But yeah, go ahead. No, it's, I mean that's that's. Uh, it, but you know, I mean we we do the same thing too in Monero. We're not entirely um, innocent ourselves. Yeah. No, uh, Nightmare. Nightmare's got some good. Yeah, he thinks after the election, you know, the market is going to is going to crash right so it's like being suspended suspended right now because things are kind of on hold um, that's a possibility for sure i tend to agree with that uh, as, a, as a high high likelihood of that's kind of like what's keeping things propped up right now um yeah and then it's interesting too the you know what it means in terms of you know regulation right so we have basically a, a new government coming into place here in the, in the states to, to some degree right it's going to be it's going to be different than it was. Obviously, Biden's still going to be there, but uh, the makeup of yeah, the seems like, uh, and the, and the yeah, Senate you're... would be different. Oh, my la and can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Sorry. Yeah, Go I'm ahead. just saying that that's that's interesting, right? So, like, what the election is going to, what the effect of the election is going to be on crypto in terms of regulation and stuff, right? So, are they going to, you know, are, are are certain bills now going to be are more likely to pass that weren't maybe necessarily weren't as likely, uh, and will that affect uh, you know, the, the price of crypto. Is it, is it yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've got, um, it seems like the Republicans have really become uh, more more and more friends of crypto. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's probably a lot of people, a lot of institutions that would like to play more in crypto, but the lack of regulation. Now, I'm like basically totally against regulation, but um, you know that could be positive for price if they pass friendly regulation that they, that says, hey, institutions, y'all are free to go play with crypto in these ways. Um, that all that stuff takes years, though. Like maybe next year we would see some bills being proposed, being passed. But if the Republicans do that from like from the Senate uh, or from the House, really. Um, you're, it seems like with the way things are so contentious that the Democrats are going to be like, no, it's, you know, the crypto scam stuff and we've got to block it and Biden will, you know, he'll, um, uh, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll choose not to sign the bill. So I, I don't know. I guess we have to see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the things like I'm most interested in, and, and I think we have it in the news, like they, uh, they recently had a ransomware summit at the white house. So things like that oh, wow. are, start, are starting to move. Right. And, and they're calling out cryptos in there and they're they're talking about the need to uh, globally clamp down on KYC AML for, for crypto. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Republicans seem to definitely be more pro crypto in general. But I also in terms of where they stand with things like ransomware and funding terror, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, crypto could be used to fund terrorism, things like that. Uh, it's kind of we'll 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 kind of see where people end up standing on those issues, you know. Yeah, I mean they love to grandstand. Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's always that. Dude, thank, thank you so we... much. We uh, we're actually r- quickly running out of power over here. So Nita wasn't able. I to don't get know the... what happened. It, I think the it, adapter it, is messed it, up. It knows, it knows, it knows your computer is trying it's to. It's trying to you. take care of me. Sunita's you know, <laughs> so running out of battery too. <laughs> I well. am running out of battery. Okay. I'm slowly disappearing. All right, guys. Well, uh, it was uh, it was a good time. Look forward thank to talking you. with y'all. Hopefully Thursday next week. Yeah, definitely. Dude, yeah, that's cannot awesome. wait to meet yeah. you and, and hang out. I mean, obviously, we met before, but cannot wait to see you again in person. Very yeah, much. Awesome. Yeah, likewise. Uh, excited about it. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Right. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. You too. Bye.